Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Bloodborn How To. In this video, we'll be taking down the One Reborn, which you can find in your second visit to Yahagul after you've uh, defeated Rom and triggered the Blood Moon event. Right, so for this boss, what do we need? On the offense, as long as your weapon's decently upgraded, you'll be fine because the boss isn't particularly resistant to any form of physical damage. Um, elemental damage, the boss is hugely weak to bolt, so if you're using like the Tonitrus or you've got ball paper, it'll do you good for this fight. He's also like moderately weak to fire, so that's a good option too. Um, arcane resi like damage, he's super resistant to, so anything arcane, don't bother with. Waste of time. So this fight is more or less a callback to, um, at least mechanic-wise, to the Tower Knight fight from Demon Souls in the regard that there's lots of adds. Now, what it is is, as you can see through the fog door here, that the boss is just waiting for us, but there's actually a balcony on either side of the arena. And on that balcony will be the bell ringing women that you find throughout this stage. Now, if you, you can just ignore them and fight the boss as normal, but they will launch fireballs at you which they don't do a lot of damage but they can stagger you and the boss like tends to thrash about a lot so it can lead to you getting killed unnecessarily speaking of uh, getting killed unnecessarily we'll want to avoid that so what are we wearing defensively well most of the boss's attacks are physical damage but a lot of his spells deal arcane damage so I'm wearing the tomb prospector set which has got excellent arcane resistance so the boss has got a couple of uh, mechanics I'll go over during the fight but the main thing to think about as soon as you come through the fog door or through this area for your first time is you just want to ignore the boss completely and make a dash for this corner now in this corner is the stairwell that will lead you up to the, the second floor where the, uh, the bell ringers are now it's worth noting that when you go for these you should try and attack them sideways on so they don't fall down into the, uh, the arena floor because they usually survive the fall and it, it kind of negates the whole point. It's also worth noting while you're up here you should be quick because if you spend too long the boss can't actually reach up and attack you. So we're just running around the outside taking all these down before we actually start the boss fight proper. And this should be the last one. Now plunging attacks off here are a viable strategy for this boss, but bear in mind that you do take fall damage from the height, so it's not always worth it. Right, so now we're on the boss proper, and he's got several attacks that I'm going to go over. So the first one is he tends to thrash about a bit, like with every limb on his body. This only generally tends to happen if you're close to the boss. He's also got the spell you can just see there, well both of them actually, he's got that Nova attack, he only tends to cast that when you're close to him, but not always as you've just seen. He can also fire like a, project a blood projectile at you, or he can drop corpses onto your head like that. Now it's normally two or three bundles of corpses like per sort of actual attack, oh, and he's also got this attack which you can see here where he covers the floor in poison and it does a hell of a lot of damage so your best bet when that happens is to just run for higher ground because it covers the entirety of the arena floor so I'm taking the long route here but I'm trying to draw him towards the middle of the arena so yeah mechanics as you can see he's firing his blood projectile at us he's got his thrash when he's really, you're really close to him He's got the Nova Explosion, which also happens when you're close to him. And he's got the Corpse Spell. It's worth noting that while you're in the stairwell here, you can usually, like, if you need to get some healing, he's a good place to do it. But he can still target you with the Corpse Spell in here, so try to stay on the move. Right, so as for where we attack the boss, He's got like his big limbs at the front and his big limbs at the back where you want to fit in just about here. And it's pretty free damage here. 
and when you do enough to him it is possible to get him to like his head's the weak point so you'll see how much damage I can do by attacking him here and that happens when you deal enough damage to any part of him you'll get periodically staggered this boss is incredibly easy to stagger right so there's the corpse spell so again what we're aiming for is to get between these two big limbs and then just behind this leg here in between that and the back although I'm getting thrashed about here but that's generally speaking the safe spot so you just nip in here get some free damage off and of course this would be going much quicker if I was actually using some bold paper so I'll do that on the next opportunity there we go Oh, and he's doing the, is he doing the sicky attack? He is doing the sicky attack. So even if I come up here, I'll, I'll be safe. It doesn't necessarily have to be the stairwell. Just note that it does co cover all of the, the lower arena floor. Right, so we've got the front down here, and we should be able to get some big damage in here. Oh, I've actually went the wrong side. This is his tail, not his head, but never mind. It's free damage. So the vast majority of his attacks can be avoided just by staying on the move. You can roll constantly to avoid the corpse spell. You can roll to avoid the air, the blood projectile. The sicky spell, you can just come to higher ground or in the stairwell. The Nova, you just need to get out the way for. And then we just dip in and try and get some damage in. Have I got the head this time? I have. Excellent. Shame I don't have a ball paper active. It's also worth noting that for this boss, his major limbs, the big four, they are, you can actually um, do enough damage to them to break them and you'll deal additional damage to them afterwards from that point. But this fight, considering where it is in the game, is one of the easier ones. All it requires is you to keep an eye on what's happening. As you notice, I'm not using lock on because because the boss is big. I've gone over this in my other videos. It just makes the camera angle really awkward. Oh, there's the Nova. Now I couldn't actually see that there, but I heard it coming because it does have an audio cue as well for that particular attack you can hear him charging it up okay, so whenever he drops the corpses just roll and you avoid them don't need to use another blood oh nearly got hit by the air poison attack there And there's the sit again, so we need to move. Sometimes it'll only cover a little bit, but it, when he does it for real, it covers the arena floor like very quickly. And there's the kill. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope these tips helped and it'll help you take down this boss easily. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Bloodborne How To.